congratulations, you're watching this video because you want to be better at sales. And you are about to discover what it takes to be better at sales because you're listening to someone right now who's done millions of dollars in sales. I've done millions of dollars in sales one-on-one, nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes, belly-to-belly across the kitchen table. I've done millions of dollars in sales on the internet. I've done millions of dollars in sales from the stage. In fact, just last week, as crazy as it sounds, just last week, I did a presentation where we did $3.1 million in sales in about two and a half hours. So I'm not going to share with you any theory today. I'm going to share with you the secret psychology of sales success, how to become the greatest salesperson in the world, not Ogmandino, greatest salesperson in the world, but how to become the greatest salesperson in the world that you can become. And if you'll do these three things, it's going to change your sales life forever. So if you're ready, get your pen and paper handy because I got some writer downers for you. Here we go. Number one, if you want to be use the secret psychology of sales success, number one, don't be greedy. Now, Myron, what's your definition of greedy? My definition of greedy is desiring your outcome more than you desire their outcome. It's desiring... Greedy is desiring more than you deserve to have because of the work you've done. That's greedy. Like overcharging or underperforming, both of those are attributes of greedy people. So on the front end, you can't overcharge. Now, I charge a lot. That's coming from somebody who charges a lot of money for people to work with me, but I don't overcharge. You say, what do you mean? Well, we've got my inner circle, which is $155,000. We've got our King Solomon's Court, which is $55,000. We have our VIP days, which are $350,000. We have our um, King Solomon's Royal Family, which is a million dollars a year. Those, by the way, all those prices are yearly prices. Now, I'm telling you I've got these high prices, and I'm saying don't overcharge. Well, Myron, aren't you overcharging? I'm not overcharging because the people in who do what I teach them to do, we've got people that are – we got – Dozens and dozens of people who've earned million-dollar day awards for doing over a million dollars in revenue in a single day. We've got even dozens more who've got 100K day awards. I think last year we had five people who got a $5 million day award. And last year we had one person who did over $11 million in a single day in revenue. So, so when I say don't overcharge, I'm not saying don't have premium value offers. Of course I have premium value offers. Have a $5,000 offer or $10,000 or $20,000 or $30,000 or $100,000 or $300,000 or whatever, whatever matches your ability to fulfill. So charging a high price and overcharging aren't the same thing. I, I feel like I'm overcharging somebody if I can't help them 10x their investment into the service that I provide. By the way, when somebody invests into a service I provide, they're not investing in me. They're investing in themselves through me. So if you invest in yourself through me, then I'm going to make sure that I do everything in my power to help you 10x that investment. So if somebody pays me $55,000, it's because I know if they do what I teach them to do, they can make $550,000 in the next 12 months. And a lot of it doesn't take that long. So if I charge somebody $155,000 because I know that in the next 12 months they can make $1.5 million. I, like there's no doubt in my mind about it. If I charge somebody $350,000 for a VIP day, I know they could make $3.5 million in the next 12 months if they do what I say. So don't be greedy. Don't overcharge. Like just because, okay, for instance, I've got a friend who wrote a book called High Ticket Book Secrets. And he had books that he, he had one book that he sold for $2,000, another book that he sold for $5,000. And people bought them. That's great. But that doesn't mean I need to sell Click and Order for Brick and Mortar or Trash Man to Cash Man or Boss Moves for $2,000 to $5,000. Do I think it's worth that much? Do I think somebody could make, could 10x their result? 100%. If I sold Boss Moves for $5,000, somebody could easily make $50,000. We got a guy in our inner circle who bought Boss Moves and within two months made $800,000, right? From the stuff he learned in a book that we sell for $30. So yes, yes. I charge a lot for the things I sell, but I don't overcharge. Okay, that's number one. Don't be greedy. That's a, like, don't be greedy. Number two, don't be needy. What does that mean? Don't need people to buy. Don't sell because you need to make some money, right? Don't, and if you do need to make some money, that's fine. You need to make some money. We all have to make some money, but don't be thinking about the fact that you need to make a sale when you're selling. Like, I, one of the reasons I'm good at selling, and you will get better at selling, if you just totally divorce yourself from the need for a yes. Like, I don't, tell me yes or tell me no. Tell me now. I got to go, right? S-W, 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 N. What does that mean? Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting next. Like, stop trying to talk people into buying what you sell. Don't 
be needy. Selling is not convincing. When you're trying to convince people, you come across as needy. When you come across as needy, nobody wants, any, nobody wants to buy anything from you. Nobody wants to buy something from you to do you a favor. Nobody wants to buy something from you because you need the money. Nobody wants to buy something from you so you can feed your children. They don't care about you that much. They just, I mean, it's not that they hate you. They just don't like you that much. So instead of being needy, I need to make a sale, I need to make a sale. Like, divorce yourself from the need to make a sale and understand the principle of the law of averages. By the way, everybody in sales has an average. Like, some people have lower averages than others, some people have higher averages, but everybody has an average. So out of every so many presentations you make, you're gonna make X number of sales. So let's say your average closing rate is 10%. That means every 10 people you do a presentation with, you're gonna make one sale. Okay, cool. So if your offer is $5,000 and you want to do $5,000 in revenue a day, you need to do 10 presentations a day, you'll make $5,000 a day, $5,000 a day times 30 days, that's $150,000 a month, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye, right? Use the law of averages to your favor. Go out and have enough sales conversations in a row to figure out what your average is so that when you know what your average is, you, you will understand that you don't need to make this sale. You need to make a sale, but it don't need to be this one, right? And so what happens when you come to that conclusion is you'll stop coming across as desperate to people and you'll make more sales. One of the, watch this. It's kind of like the boy meets girl scenario, right? Boy meets girl. Boy's crazy about girl. Girl thinks boy is creepy, right? Here's your problem. A lot of people that you're selling to think you're creepy, the creepy salesperson, right? Boy meets girl. Girl's crazy about boy. Boy thinks girl is crazy. Why? Because if they were smart, they couldn't, surely they wouldn't like me that much, right? That's, I mean, that's the subconscious thinking that we have, right? And so we want somebody who plays hard to get in a relationship. Well, guess what? In a sales relationship, you also want somebody who plays hard to get. You want to be the hard to get salesperson. You want to be the person who, when you're making a sale, you don't come across as needy. Don't be needy. And then when I say don't be needy, there are a couple of different kinds of needy. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be a needer of needers, right? And that's what a lot of people, this is one of the biggest mistakes salespeople make. They're a needer of needers. They need people to need them because that's how they feel important. Like, I don't need you to need me. Like, I am not essential to your equation. I don't want to make myself essential to your equation. Because then you might be knocking at my house on my door at four o'clock in the morning. And I don't want to get up to come answer the door. So I don't need you to need me. Don't be a needer of needers. Don't even be a needer of leaders. Be a leader of leaders. Lead people to a sale. Don't need people to make a sale. Here's what's really cool. There are already right now hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of people, maybe even tens of millions of people in the world who would love to buy what you have to sell if they only knew you existed. So don't be needy. Somebody's going to say yes. Just know that. I love what Tom Hopkins said um, in his book. If you make $5,000 per sale and you have to talk to 10 people to make a sale and don't look at the fact that you got paid $5,000 for that one yes, look at it from the standpoint that you got paid $500 for each of those conversations. Because it's like a minor mining for gold. It's like a minor mining for gold. In order to find one ounce of gold, you have to move tons and tons of dirt. But you don't look for the dirt. You look for the gold. I'm not calling people dirt, but I'm saying you got to go through a bunch of no's. I'm calling the no's the dirt that you have to move to get to the yes of the gold. Okay, so don't be, don't be needy. Don't be greedy. Don't be needy. What should you be? You need to learn to be seedy. What is seedy? How, do I, how can I be seedy? I'm not talking about that kind of seedy. You want to be, <laughs> be seedy, which means you're planting seeds. You understand that every word that comes out of your mouth is a seed. Every deed is a seed. Every thought is a seed that you're sowing into the garden of your future. Every, every time you make a sale and you fulfill on the last sale you made, that's a seed. That's a seed that grows a reputational garden, right? And so you're going to be known for the fact either that you get, like you produce results for people or you don't. So if you make your life a life that is aware of the fact that every thought is a seed. So how I think about the people I'm selling to, that's a seed. Every word is a seed. How I talk to the people I'm selling to, that's a seed. But also, um, all the money that I spend, that's a seed. So understand, if, I, if you don't, if you'll just stop being greedy, 
Stop trying to make money that you don't deserve. You'll stop being needy. Stop needing people to need you. Stop being a needy. Oh, I got to make a sale. I got to make a sale. Stop being desperate. Well, you'll be seedy and sow good seeds everywhere you go. I love what Frank Kern says. It's one of my favorite quotes. One of the things you got to do is you got to prove to people that you can help them by actually helping them. There's nothing that will be better for you selling than the community service content that you provide in the world. What is community service content, Myron? What does that mean? That means the stuff that you put out in the marketplace for free. If it helps people, oh, they're going to come back and pay you. Like this YouTube channel, I've had people tell me that from a free YouTube video, they went out and made, from one of my free YouTube videos, they went out and made $250,000 from a free video. So if my free videos are helping you, eventually you're going to come pay me. And if you don't, oh, well, I, didn't need to, I don't need the money anyway. So we, we all going to be all right. So if you want to become one of the best salespersons, greatest salespeople in the world, and you want to understand the secret psychology of sales success, don't be greedy, don't be needy, be seedy. Because if you will, before you know it, you'll reap what you sow. Here's the interesting thing about reaping what you sow. You reap what you sow. That means whatever kind of seed you sow, that's the kind of harvest you're going to reap. But you reap later than you sow. That means you don't necessarily sow the seed today and reap the harvest today. You reap later than you sow. But here's the beauty of it. You always reap more than you sow. You plant one seed, you get a whole tree. That's the beauty of reaping what you sow. So don't be greedy, don't be needy, be seedy, and you can become one of the greatest salespeople in the world. By the way, you want to check out a really good video? Check out my TED Talk. That TEDx Talk is fire. It'll really help you understand the art of persuasion at another level. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, in between time, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.